Okay, we are back with Dr. Carrie Thin. She is running for mayor of Moreno Valley, and let me tell you something. I like what I hear. Uh, I was, you know, not just. Be, I know I'm kind of biased because I'm a, I'm a military veteran, and one thing about veterans is when we say support vets, we actually mean it. So uh, I we, thank you for that. Yeah. So I mean, we, you know, I'm a, a big supporter, big family, uh, especially my Air Force uh, family people. But um, Sean's been quiet, which is unusual for Sean. And again, he is. Uh, he is not on anybody's side. He is one of the biggest, I would say, meanest uh, residents that I've seen because I throw some ideas at Sean and he just, I mean, the language is just, it's unbelievable. So uh, we're going to let Sean take, take this side. He's going to ask him some questions because he's in another district. And I think that's important to have different residents ask these mayoral candidates different questions that's going to affect where they live. So Sean, go ahead and take it away. Well, uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to be here and talk to you was that um, I'm looking at all the candidates, whether, um, and well, with the exception of uh, Gutierrez and the other Highland Bergen candidates, I'm interested in figuring out, okay, if whatever candidate I don't vote for doesn't get the job, how am I going to work with the others, uh, whoever does get the job? Um, and so, um, one thing that I've been concerned about is the behavior of the city staff, that they don't seem to be very... Um, user-friendly as far as uh, being able to get answers from them. And I was wondering, um, how would you go about uh, making this them more transparent? Uh, like, I know there was a, they had a private meeting at a restaurant with uh, Edo Benzini, um which was fairly was unethical, and I was just wondering, um, how would you handle that? Would you tell them to either shape up or ship out, or um, that, how you how would you handle um, the transparency of not just the politicians but also the, the, the people working under them? Well, I think the first thing is is that I, I wouldn't want to live on all of the city staff under one umbrella because I had nothing but positive experience with the city clerk's office in the last couple of weeks. Absolutely. They've been Absolutely. tremendously supportive. Uh, but having said that, I do know that residents do specifically ask me, what am I going to do about the city staff? There is a perception. And I think that is something that I and the city manager are going to have to have a conversation about, a pretty clear conversation, which is, we serve. We are here to serve. I also think a little bit of customer friendliness. If I can't offer you what you're looking for, one thing I've learned on this campaign trail is, I can't be everything to everyone, and I can't say yes to everyone. But I could inform them as to what my position is, what are the rules, what are the laws, and I could do it in a friendly way that leaves someone thinking that, oh, okay, I didn't get what I wanted, but at least I know now why. And I think that is something that I have heard from residents is that they approach the city hall and they don't even know why they're being turned away. Um, there are organizations in this city that I have that have, I have had experiences with that have been nothing but positive and. and just a number of organizations. So I know the difference between um, customer service and support and the difference between um, it's the end of my day and I just need to get you out of my face kind of kind of thing. Um, so that's a conversation that I have to have with the city manager, with the other council people, because it is important to me as mayor how are we going to support our citizens and what can we do to go above and beyond? What can we do to be helpful? Can we meet them where they need to be, where they live? Can we give them the information they're asking for in a timely manner? And I realize that the city gets out there on their website, they have a Facebook page, they have mailers they send out. There's just a, it's a blizzard of information, but for whatever reason, it's still not filling the void, which is getting the, the citizens of Marina Valley the information they need. Because Why know, doesn't it fill the void? Well, especially with the Represent Us, I mean, a lot of the things that drive um, the, the, the perceptions of corruption, uh, whether uh, suspected or well-founded, uh, well is the lack of transparency. So would you be willing to uh, uh, have a, a public information officer that would... Uh, get that information for people to make sure that it's there's one source of information that knows everything that's going on. And, and, and that's absolutely necessary. You know, one of the ways the military, and I'm going to use my military experience, is you win hearts and minds. You know, you you got to get out there and let people know the good you're doing and win hearts and minds. 
and provide people the information they're seeking. And that means you got you have to monitor social media. You have to monitor the feedback cards that you're getting. You have to listen to the citizens that come to council or that come to other meetings to find out why do they have a lack of trust and what is it that you can do to help mitigate that. I may not be able to, to solve everyone's trust issues with the city. We have a long history. But I can certainly attempt to give them the information they're seeking. And one of the comments I made um, recently on a, face, on a social media post was that the lack of transparency is because people do not trust the government. And when you don't trust your government, you can you can know them with information, but that does not build trust. All that does is entrench the people that do not trust you. And that's something we've got to do. So that's that's yes. No. Conversation needs to be had. Right, uh, and, and and that's kind of good. You brought up to represent us, uh, which goes into my uh, main question that I'm going to ask all the candidates, uh, besides Edgemont. We have a big problem with big money in our politics. I don't have a quarter of a million dollars to run. Now, you were in the military. Your husband was in the military. If you guys got a quarter of a million dollars, uh, I'm, I hope you didn't work in finance. <laughs> but but you, you know what I'm talking about. We have a big problem in this city where outside sources are bringing big money into politics. And on that very web website that and another, that's another thing people if you're listening uh, she's probably the only candidate that I've really seen that has gone to that website and has really put out and answered the questions that is put before her so I'm impressed by that in America like that shows to my own peril sometimes yes my yes head. you know we have some people on there Evan Moran or whatever his name is uh, that's very aggressive and like I said but still you know you don't show any fear and that's what we want to see honest people but the main question is and a lot of candidates have gone over Around the question, what are you going to do before you get elected about big money in politics? And when you do get elected, what are you going to do afterwards once you're on that seat? Well, the first thing is, I evaluate every donation to my campaign personally. My treasurer knows to contact me anytime she gets a check in the mail or there's a donation made to our website to ask me, Carrie, are we accepting this donation or not? And if I evaluate the donation, I ask, why are you donating my campaign? What is your expectation? Is there a quid pro quo implied here? Um, Am I going to have to recuse myself from voting on your issue? Because I have already decided in my own campaign that if I perceive a future conflict of interest, then I will try my best to not accept that donation and if, if there's a stumble on my part and, or there's something in the future I can't foresee, because that certainly can happen as well, then the expectation from the people that donate to my campaign would be that I would recuse themselves should it come before me on council. Um, the second thing after the campaign is that I believe we need a strong ethics commission. And I just did some research in this area today. As a baseline, the state... Uh, State-level political campaign contribution limits are $4,200 per person or $8,200 per committee. That's the lowest level. They go all the way up to about $25,000 for governor, okay? So that, to me, is a starting level to cap campaign contributions in the city of Reno Valley. We currently have no cap. We currently have no guidelines. There are other guidelines out there that this ethics commission, with teeth, with a charter from the city council, with uh, some sort of regulatory action that can be involved, and more importantly, direction to the city clerk. What can what can the city clerk give? Training and other other things that are needed to campaigns and to staff. Because my campaign staff, they're all volunteers. Yeah, I assume that uh, when you say uh, campaign limits, that would also include the uh, like uh, Highland Fairview's uh, Reno Valley Jobs Commission and the the Chung's. Uh, that you basically use the Jack Ravenloft playbook of like five hundred dollars uh, several times over. Well, again, I can't con- I I cannot comment on what would be perceivably an independent expenditure, either for my campaign or for anyone else. But the the bottom line is is that the state has a limit of eighty two hundred dollars per committee. 
So how about we just start with that? And wouldn't that improve um, the relationship between uh, citizens and, and candidates that are running? Sure, I, I think it would I think that start. alone. Start. The other thing I would like to just um, suggest is that to run for office is not free. It costs money. Yes, it does. And I noticed that on qualification laws that we all see as candidates, that some of the candidates that qualified for office did not pay the fee to have their information in the voter guide. It costs, uh, let's see. For mayor, almost $1,000. Well, for council districts to run, it costs $450 to put your information in the voter guide. For mayoral candidates, it costs $950. For many campaigns, that's just too high of a hurdle to decide to get into the fray. That needs to change as well. Now, whether that means that perhaps the ethics commission that may be in the future be able to initiate fines, maybe that fine money comes back, and that helps defray the cost for some of the candidates that want to run. That's another suggestion for the Ethics Commission. There are two areas the Ethics Commission could work on, not only current campaigns, but how to proceed in the future in the city of Marina Valley to get trust back in the political process. And speaking of the, the campaign contributions, um, a lot of the big campaign contributions are from the de- these uh, developers that really aren't scrupulous, and it's not necessarily the the big ones that um, have uh, uh, character problems, um, and sometimes it's the smaller contractors too. Like um, there's a, a, a contractor uh, for the field next to my parents' house that's uh, got all these wild plans and tried to jump the jump the gun on all the permitting process and start grading and stuff. And he's not exactly the he's not exactly uh, everything that he's promising his neighbors he would be. Uh, would, you, would you have a plan to? Uh, that these developers more before they do business in the city? Well, just to give you an exa- example of what I have already done, I'm on a committee in um, Riverside County that's uh, constructing a uh, veterans park in a, a uh, development called La Montana. The developer on that project, uh, Joseph Ravani, is also a developer here in the city. He has contributed to my campaign. And I sat down with Joseph and asked him very specific questions. And I also asked his, um, if you will, his political director, uh, why does Joseph want him to donate to my campaign? And would his issues come before me? Because I may have to recuse myself if you donate to my campaign. That's my, that's my platform. Um, I've sat down with Joseph. I've seen the efforts he's taking on this veterans park. And I've seen the amount of detail he's putting into this veterans park. Um, I uh, can only suggest to you that the effort that I've seen from this developer in uh, developing the La Ventana Ranch down in, in it's a Menifee, it straddles Menifee in Paris, is something that I hope we see in all developers. They're taking into consideration the uh, Indian issues. There are it's straddling some Indian property as well. Um, it's taking into consideration, of course, the environmental issues. It's taking into consideration how will the high school students get through the Veterans Park to get to the community. It, so these are things that I think, if we had developers of that quality, and I might also tell you, and, and if Joseph is listening, he'll hear this as well, I did the research on him. I tried to find out the good and the bad. I also tried to find out who he donated to, because I wanted to know before I accepted his donation. I wanted to make sure that if there was something out there I needed to know, somebody came up to me and said, Carrie, you know, this guy is, yeah. I wanted to be informed before I accepted his donation. So in the event his company comes to the city of Marina Valley, which I do know they have one Mm -hmm. project Project. that is not yet there, um, that I will know what I'm going to do when that project, if it comes before me, I will recuse myself. I have to. That's awesome. Uh, so far, I like what I got to see. We're going to have one more section, and we're going to pay some bills real, real quick. But again, we are at the Starbucks on Fredericks in District 1. We are with mayoral candidate Dr. Carrie Thin, and we're going to ask her in the next section, what makes her qualified to be mayor? There are a lot of candidates that say, I'm qualified, but for some reason, they don't tell us their qualifications. So we're going to get into that, and uh, just stay tuned. Um, I guess uh, we're going to talk.